Hello brother, are you having a hard time running into the radius too? Does your PC sound like it's gonna f explode when you play this game? <laughs> well look no further because this is the ultimate into the radius 2 performance and graphics guide where I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how to get into the radius 2 to be looking crispy and running buttery smooth let's hop into it dude all right boys like i said today i'm gonna walk you through how to get the absolute best graphics and best performance for into the radius 2 on pc vr i'm gonna walk you guys through exactly which settings to tweak starting with the biggest fps killers all the way down to the smaller tweaks that you can make to really polish up how the game runs and looks so whether you're running into the radius 2 on oculus link virtual desktop it doesn't matter this is going to be getting your game looking nice and crispy and running smooth first up is shadows as you can see on this wall we have a very realistic looking shadow and believe it or not shadows and lighting in video games are the biggest culprits when it comes to fps killers if you're seeing insane stuttering lag or just crazy performance drops the first thing i would recommend you to do is to look at shadows see if it's turned up to high if it's turned up to high in here turn it down to like medium or low you should instantly see some improvements in frames and stuttering I'm pretty sure at the higher graphic settings and into the radius, they're using some form of real time lighting and shadows. Once you come in here and lower these all the way to low, it's pretty much only using baked shadows. You can see that like we can't see our shadows interacting on anything anymore. There's pre-baked lighting now. So there's only shadows for some objects. It's noticeable, but it's not that noticeable. You're not gonna be able to see your shadow, but this is probably the biggest change you can make to improve into the radius 2's performance you do not need to lower this all the way to low if you even just lower it to medium you're gonna get the real-time shadows but they're lower quality it still looks super good so that is the first setting we're going to attack to improve the performance of the game the second most impactful performance tweak is to simply just lower the resolution scale in game i would recommend starting at the lowest resolution scale especially if you're running the game with a less powerful gpu start at 85 percent and then slowly bump your way up go to 90 see how it runs 100 see how it runs and then 110 120 i think you can go all the way up to like 150 in here let me see here oh my god i hope i didn't crash the game dude i'm running this game with a 4070 ti the best performance i get is running the game at like 110 or 100 resolution scale when i'm at 100 resolution scale i can easily run the game with high overall quality Obviously, resolution impacts the game's performance a ton, but it also impacts the visuals of the game a ton. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You will improve performance of the game, but if you go too low for resolution scale, you're really going to notice it when it comes to visuals. But if I did want to try to bump this up to 120, I would try to compensate a little bit by dropping the shadow quality down to medium, foliage density down to medium, and view distance down to medium. And I mean, even doing that, dude, it's still making the game look kind of laggy for me really mess around with the resolution scale to see how high you can go while also still being able to run this game with overall quality of like medium to high it'll be different for everybody Higher resolution is definitely gonna give you that extra visual quality, but it is really hard on your GPU. So be careful, do tiny little adjustments and just see where you can get it. All right, so that's resolution scale. If you've messed around with shadows and overall resolution scale in the game, and you're still getting some visual hiccups, some lagginess, stuttering, up next, we're gonna try out view distance. View distance is essentially just how far things get rendered. So if you bump this down to low or medium, it does not make that much of a difference visually the the most it's gonna do is you're gonna see some things popping into view as you walk around but if you're like me and your gaze is fixed like 10 feet in front of you max all the time you really don't need view distance to be high even though it's not gonna make as big of an impact as shadows you will 100% notice a difference in terms of performance with an extremely small impact to actual visual quality so take a look here look off into the distance I have view distance since it low right now. You see how we can kind of spot a couple of rocks disappearing in the distance? 
and then bam, they reappear once we get a little bit closer. That's basically it, that's the only change. Personally, I don't like to run view distance at low because sometimes it is a little bit immersion breaking, I'm not gonna lie, to see a giant cliff just pop in and out of nowhere when I'm walking around the radius. So if you can, try to have this at medium. Medium is kind of the sweet spot. You'll maybe see a few trees popping in and out, but it's not gonna be anything huge. And in open world sections of the game, which is like 80% of this freaking game, lowering view distance a teeny bit is really gonna help you out. It's going to improve performance a ton. Fourth up is field of view strength, FOV strength right here. I have it set to widest, which essentially just means that everything in your peripheral is not going to be rendered at the resolution scale that you have set in the game. It's gonna be lower, which frees up a good chunk of performance without that drastic of a visual impact. Widest is the highest. So basically I am getting the largest area rendered at full resolution. And there's only just like a very small bit on the edges of my peripheral that are not getting rendered at a high resolution so if you want to improve performance you can take this all the way down to narrow so i would play around with this if you're really having struggles with performance in this game take it down to narrow test that out a little bit damn dude Ugh, this game looks fucking insane all right number five on the list is foliage density it is exactly what it describes. It is the density of foliage, the amount of foliage around the map. This mostly helps take the load off of your CPU. I'm not gonna lie to you, you definitely notice a difference, but ultimately, it's not that big of a deal, I'll show you. Okay, so this is low foliage density. We have like maybe 20 or 30% of the amount of foliage we had before. Did you notice a difference? Did you notice a change? All right, let's see how it looks at medium foliage density. See, we got a little bit more filled out. Maybe we're at around 50 or 60% of the amount of foliage. Bam, take it up to high foliage and we're at 100%. It's definitely a lot thicker, more lush. It feels a little bit more populated. And I mean, overall, I love having foliage high because it really makes the game feel more realistic, but low foliage isn't that big of a hit. I'm gonna show you guys one more time. Let's turn that down to low. See, it's, it's a little bit of a hit. Really not that bad, very doable, and it will improve the performance of the game a pretty decent amount. Number six is actually a bunch of different settings. It, it's pretty much a combination of the quality of geometry in the game, textures, effects, and experimental optimization. So you're gonna wanna have experimental optimizations on always. It's pretty much a free performance boost, but when it comes to effects, textures, and geometry, these aren't gonna smack your PC in the face too hard, but they'll definitely make a difference, especially if you're having a hard time running this game. My recommendation, as always, is start low and go high lowering the texture quality is probably the biggest visual impact but when it comes to geometry and effects it's not that big of a deal these settings aren't going to make any insane impacts to the game's performance but obviously if you're at this point of the video you're really going to need to start scraping the barrel to get this game running good so just play around with these three i like to keep all of them at at least medium if you can those are our first lines of defense against performance drops and shitty graphics in this game and it seems like you're still here dude so let's really dive deeper there are quite a few settings that you can change in external apps to make this game run better and this is going to vary depending on whether or not you're using virtual desktop oculus link and some things that you can tweak in the steam vr settings so let's jump into it you should have an app on your computer called MetaQuest Link. Open that baby up and then go into devices. This is an example. If you see this red dot, that means that you're not using the proper USB 3 connection. So whatever game you're playing using that cable is going to be degraded in terms of performance and graphics anyways. Make sure you are plugging your USB cable into the blue USB port on your PC and make sure that the USB cable you're using is a USB 3.0. Click on MetaQuest 3. You will have an option over here to the right where it says Graphics Preferences. Click on that. If you're having a really hard time running this game, stick with the recommended settings that this app has suggested based on your PC specs. If you want to go higher, uncheck Automatic Recommended. You can change the render resolution and you can also change the refresh rate. So 120 hertz is gonna look insanely smooth, but you're gonna have to lower the render resolution so that you don't bottleneck your PC. Mess around with these two settings, start low, go high. Okay, next is Virtual Desktop. 
desktop. Thankfully, this is actually the easiest one to navigate. Open up virtual desktop, come in here, go down to streaming, and there are a lot of settings that we can mess around with. There is a super helpful list right here of graphics quality settings that you can just instantly try out. And it's super cool because they correspond to different graphics cards. Easy to try these out. If you have an RTX 2070, 3070, or anything in between, you will have a pretty decent idea of which quality settings you can go with. Once you mess around with the overall graphics quality, if you're still running into some hitches and stuttering, there's also a VR frame rate section where you can change whether you want to run the game at 120 FPS, 90, 80, or 72. So very similar to the Oculus Quest options. Next up is bitrate. So if you have this up super high, it's going to increase the image quality, but it's definitely going to increase latency. So I personally like to keep this around 70. That just seems to work best for my setup. Probably the best thing about virtual desktop is that it has a bunch of other settings. They're just kind of like cherries on top, dude. There's a built-in adaptive sharpening algorithm that can help you increase the sharpness of the VR games that you're playing. I have this shit set to 100% because why not, dude? For synchronous space warp and Into the Radius 2 in particular, I'm pretty sure the devs recommend that you either have this on automatic or you just disable it because this has been known to cause some issues in the past with the game's performance. Every Quest 3 has a Snapdragon processor in it, so instantly, dude, this will make your game look way better by default. Turn this on. It upscales the images and increases the detail with basically no performance hit. Remember, like I said, start low, go high, and see what you can get away with while still maintaining good visuals and good performance. Okay, now that you are in Steam VR, head down to VR settings. This gives you the option to mess around with the resolution per eye. You can have this on custom or automatic. Automatic will place it at the best settings for your PC. PC specs. There is an option for advanced super sample filtering on here. You want that on. If you're still experiencing some stuttering, you can turn this down if you want to. I wouldn't go lower than 100%. All right, and believe it or not, that is everything in Steam VR. This is pretty much the extent of what you can do, dude. It's going to be a different combination of all of these for everyone but I guarantee you will be able to eventually tweak a mixture of these settings to get the game running perfectly for you. That is it, boys. That's your full Into the Radius 2 graphics and performance guide. Remember, mess with shadows first, resolution scale second, view distance third, and then all of the rest of the settings that I have noted in this video, use those to polish the game up a little bit. Never start out at the highest setting because that's how you crash your game. Always start low and slowly go high. As soon as you see performance start to drop or visuals start to tank, start to take the setting back down a little bit until everything starts to normalize again. If you found something helpful in this video, it would absolutely warm my heart if you would subscribe, join the family, dude, become a part of the channel, even get a membership if you're feeling up to it. You can help support old Conroy if you do. Speaking of members, shout out to the boys. Thank you guys for supporting the channel by more than just being a subscriber. You know it. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. If you liked this video, video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Leave a comment and let us know if there's any other graphics or performance tweets that you found out that I didn't note in this video. The community will thank you. Share into the radius too with your family and friends, your grandma, your dog. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to get as many people as humanly possible to scare themselves shitless by playing this VR game. So help support the cause. <laughs> but most importantly, dude, I hope that you're doing good. Have an awesome rest of your weekend, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.